Thanks for tuning into the Dope Vision Experience podcast. It's your boy Frank Nitty. Today I got a special wrap up. I got a wrap up guest with my, with my homie What's Wallace. Happening? You know what I'm saying? Happening? From the town, from the bay, he gonna come help me get this squared away for you guys. I got some great topics for you guys to kind of look into. We're gonna do top five artists. We're gonna do you know the best moments of the year, some of the hottest artists of the year, the top five albums of the year. You know, so on and so forth. But the first thing I want to do when to kick off, we want to start off with the top five albums. Top you know, five. my top five album list, and then we're going to get his top five album list, and we're going to see it compare them and see which one is going to work best for you guys. You know, these I album top fives, you know what I'm saying? I know you guys are going to be, you know, crushing us and trying to talk, say, hey, you guys don't know what you're talking about, but these are some of our top five these, albums for the year. These legit albums, man. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear I don't hear none of y'all feedback if y'all ain't agree with me. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. I'm going to give you my top five album. My first album of the year is no, no order, you know what I'm saying? But this is one I've been listening to, you know, Baby, My Turn. That's one of them, one of them gents that I've been li- really been listening to. Some of that good playback, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Replay value, real high on it. Um, I've really been listening to some of them digging. I think he's been really been doing his thing this year. He kind of, you know, taking it to another level. Yeah. And that's one of those albums I think is really going to be sitting with us for a while. What you think about that one? Man, I like it. I like, I like, uh, I like you said, The Baby? Yeah, yeah. Little Baby. Little Baby. I like Little Baby. Uh, man, he came uh, at first when he first dropped. I was like, oh, you know, he got, he got, uh, you know, a little bit of future, you know, yeah. to me when I heard him. But That's the ATL. Yeah, yeah. I thought like, you know, he he, he might have, you know, that drop that first album he might drop him kind of, but nah, he did. He he, had, he got some stand power, man. So I like I like uh, I like little baby, man. Plus he would uh he would uh keep seeing them, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They they the, they the cash know? money, gent. They the cash money crew right now. They're powerhouse right now. So For sure. I like Lil Baby. My next one I'm going to drop out to is going to be back in Atlanta one more time. I got to represent for the South. You know, I'm from Silk. <laughs> 21 Savage. 21 Savage uh, and Metro Boomin' Savage Mode 2. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This album dropped. You know, I'm a 21 Savage fan. He dropped this album. You know, we have been waiting, uh, anticipating this album drop. You know, the first one came through. It was a dope album. I thought this was a really dope album. You know what I'm saying? They had some good visuals come across this, with this album. So, you know, that's one of my one of my top five albums for the year. Yeah, and they took that man into custody, huh? They yeah, yeah, yeah. The they, they, they had to get him back there. You know what I'm saying? They weren't playing. They weren't hey. playing. Right around, the Super, right around the Super Bowl, yeah. They weren't playing. Bowl, yeah, they weren't hey, playing. But I say this, though. He came back with a vengeance because that, that, that album yeah. hard. Yeah, album hard. hard. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Give, I always like Metro Boomin, too. Metro Boomin is one of the... Uh, to me, it's one of the top top producers in the yeah. game right now. You know, but yeah, that twenty one, uh, that twenty one Savage album was hard. For yeah, sure, for sure. For sure. And Metro, Metro continue cranking, cranking the beats out there. Yeah, they they're a good duo. You know, what I'm saying when yeah. they get together, they do they they create some magic, man. I don't know what it is with them too, but when they get together, they create some dope music. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like. Man, it's like uh, it's like Devonte Adams with uh Aaron Rodgers. Right? Oh yeah, it's just a connection. It's the connection. They are gonna put connect- the numbers up. Yeah, you know it's a connection. I mean? They got they got they got a good. And sometimes you know, so that's why I like when a lot of these young artists they they in the booth and they work together with the with the uh, producer in the room. Not necessarily a producer produce it somewhere else and then they send it to them, then they rap over. But when you're in the room together, you can create you can create that magic, man. I think they just got that got that touch. And whenever they touch something, it's just might it's like that Midas touch. Midas touch, man. And I always I'm always a fan of 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 artists stand with producers that work with. That work for them. You yeah. know what I mean? Because nowadays, all you hear people talking about, oh man, all they music sound, all, all this artist music sound the same, this producer, but man, uh, Cash Money, all they, they was all produced by Manny Fresh. So yeah. all of them, be, I ain't gonna say they sound the same, but. It had a sound. It had a sound, and that, that's how you create a sound. That's how you create a sound. sound. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you get a lot of these different producers from all over the country, and they're just sending you beats, and you just, you know, shuffling through 20, 30 beats and picking out the one that you like. And then sometimes the album don't sound cohesive versus when you, like, back in the day when you had, you know what I'm saying, you had that No Limit, like you said, Cash Money, you had, you know what I'm saying, Death Row, you had these artists and these producers all in the same room, just like when you had uh, Master P. He used to talk about how when they was out in the Bay, man, he had he brought the producers from New Orleans, and they just went in, in a, in a, in a uh, room, they just go from room to room, and the producers just producing beats, and they just rapping. You know what I'm saying? It all sound good. All sound good, like you said. The this man is like when they drop, you know, you ain't even, you know who who it is. You're like, oh, okay, that's it. Man, that's that's death row right there. Yep. You hear them little pianos or whatever. You know, that's got storage over a Dre beat. You know, like man, the '90s, how they how they did it. I mean, they had those big in-house producers. So, man, uh, 21 with Metro Boomin. Right. Yeah, they got that magic. That's that's, hey, that's my, it right there. My next one I want to drop. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about is uh two chains so help me god two chains came back with this one man you know two chains been dropping some dope music you know what I'm saying i used to love him with titty boy and then he switched up and he went to two chains and you know what I'm saying he dropped the last one and, and he's so creative with his album drops you know he, he dropped the last one with you know with the pink house and the car they turned into the trap museum with with, 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 with ti and he just got some great visuals and then his bars and stuff just keep elevating he keep moving up with them bars and you know what I'm saying he, he he's one of those guys who i think he can put the album together and you can kind of when you hear album 
you hear the cohesiveness in his album. You know, you see the level up talk that he talk about and some of that, you know, he always, you know, he gonna come with the drip. He gonna have all that good stuff that you're gonna see in his videos. You know what I'm saying? He gonna, he kill features whenever he jump on. So, you know, that, that album was one of the ones that just recently came out, but I think that's one of the ones that's gonna last. I'm gonna send a test of time for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, this last album, man, I'm curious. Yeah. I didn't really, that two chains, it was cool, but I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't feeling like, like, uh, what is it? The last one, with the Pink Hot Trap, what is it? Uh, 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 Pretty Girl. Like, like Trap, yeah. I mean, but two, I always like two chains. You know, two chains been in the game for a minute, so, you know, he know, he know, you know who he is. He know where he, where, he, where his pocket is. Yeah. You know I mean, the two chains always come with the, with the clever bars, with the funny bars, and, and, you know, he always got, he, he, two chains is like his own, he got his own like persona, like it's, it's yeah, it's two chain, chain. yeah, you know, two chain, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Chain. And I'm, I'm just, I'm a little salty that he ain't really got Jay on none of them, none of none of his albums. And stuff. You know, Jay been kind of dodging him, not let him get that verse. Like, well, come on, Jay, let him get that verse. He gonna kill it for you. Yeah, hey, you know, Jay be kind of stingy with them verses now. He be stingy, but he give them to Ross, he give them to Jesus, but he be stingy with them verses. He be, he be, he be stingy with it. He be stingy. Hey, hey, hey. well, I think Bleak said that. Mister yeah. Bleak said that on what's up podcast. I've seen him that he asked yeah. Jay for. For for verses, <laughs> <laughs> that's a man. You can't even get one. Like, nah, you can't even, and Jay and he at that level. He at that God level where you know what I'm saying he can pick and choose what kind of records he want to jump on and kind of you know take it to the next level. But that's just Jay. My next one, you know, I want to hold it down for New York. This is one of my favorite artists, and I think he bounced back with this album. You know, a lot of the times we kind of listen to his music and some of that, some of the um, the beats just don't match up to what he's rapping about because he can rap so good that he can rap make any beat sound better. But he had just has been doing great with beat picking. And I choose this uh this album, this Nas album, King Disease, produced by Hit Boy. You know, hit he, he locked in with Hit Boy on this album and Hit Boy produced him one, man. I think I think Hit Boy has been doing a great job in the industry, man. He's been doing a lot of producing for a lot of different artists. And he basically, you know what I'm saying, got in the booth with, with, with uh Nas. And you think and you think that somebody of his uh his age range, he won't necessarily get the opportunity to work with a guy like Nas like that. You know, you gotta give him that uh you know. <laughs> He, he he knows what's happening from the West, but yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying because it just it's kind of it's kind of hard to see some of the young the, the old the new generation working with the older generation, and you don't necessarily see that a lot, you know. And for him to lock in and produce the whole album, I think that was just like a win win for him, man. Because you know, Hit Boy just gave gave some solid some solid beats because a lot of the times like Nas just don't be picking on great beats, yeah. and because he can rap so good, he can just rap on any beat, and he's talked about that, you know, he can just rap on any beat, and so a lot of times you know we don't necessarily get the best beats from like me. I like a lot of more of those South beats. You know, I can get into, I get in tune with some of them, them New York beats. They kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of jump on some of them beats that he can just ride through, ride with, it's always lights out with that when it comes to him. And then I got a little bonus one for you that I just started listening to. You know, I said the Jack Harlow. I ain't really had no, 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 I had no notion or I had no anticipation. I had any, I had any, any thought process on how this album was going to sound. I just threw it on, you know, I was doing some work and I just threw it on in the background and the album kind of was all right, you know what I'm saying? And I think, you know what I'm saying? People like that, that's not really, it kind of give you a break from listening to all the trap beats and then all the 808s and all the heavy and all the ops and all that type of stuff. And he just kind of just rapping, you know, coming from a different perspective. So I think that's going to be one of those bonus albums that I listen to a little bit longer. I, I haven't listened to that Jack Harlow. I've been hearing a lot about it, but I know he, uh, I know he worked with that, uh, with that man, uh, KY, uh, I don't know how you say his last name, Phineas, mm -hmm. he's an engineer out of Kentucky. He's a uh, two chain engineer. Yeah, man. Hey, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a producer guy. I'm a production guy, engineer guy, man. And I know, he been uh he been in the game for a while, way back. Then. Yeah. So I know if he working with Jack, I know you know the uh the sound's gonna be nice. Yeah, and like I said, he got some he got some good cool beats on there. He riding them and he ain't really talking about all the ops and guns and all the, the normal stuff we hear in the trap music. And he just rapping, man, and he, he making it sound good. So this is one of those bonus albums that I, you know, I like that I've been listening to over the last couple of days and you know somebody else put me on to it and I was like, let me hear what he's talking about. And he got some nice bars in there. So you know that's one of those albums. I'm about to check him out. Let me hear. Let me see what you got for your man, top five. Talk to me. So, hey, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start at number five. I'm gonna start at number. Go five. ahead. My number five is Spring Clean. My man, Currency. Oh yeah, Currency. Oh yeah. Spitter, man. He, you know, hey, he been in the game for a minute. Hey, he's a. Uh, I don't. You know, he's. Some people say he's underground. Some people say. I mean, he's not really mainstream like that. But that Spring Clean. That Spring Clean is nice, man. The production is nice. Nice clean. Nice clean production. He has some nice samples in there. Uh. He had really had no features, you know. I think he got he got currency and a couple of them, but not not too many uh not too many features. But 
that's one of the things I like about him. He don't do a lot of, he don't do a ton of features. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He bought them whips. He be having them whips. You know what I'm saying? He crazy about them whips, bro. Crazy. He crazy about the whips. And I like, I like, I like currency music, man. Spitter, you know, Spitter and Dreddy. Yeah, yeah, man. That man, he becomes something that you can roll up to, sip or something, and just, and just ride. For sure. Yeah, that was nice. That's my number five, Spring Clean. My number four, Burn the Proof, Benny the Butcher. I feel you. Burn the Proof, Benny the Butcher, man. When he first came out, they first came out, it was uh, the Griselda guys. I yeah. I was like, okay, these, these, these cats are nice. But this is his first album, I believe, right? His first his first album. I think it is his first album, but man, that was nice. He has, especially the one with the Hit Boy. He got, he got a couple tracks with Hit Boy. Man, Hit Boy, you know, he been... He, 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 he get around, you know what I'm saying? He got them beats, and his beats be nice, you know what I'm saying? He got some nice beats, you know what I mean? So I really, you know, dig anything that Hit Boy kind of produce, you know what I mean? And that Benny Butcher, sometimes with that Griselda, that Griselda it's a, a little bit too New York for me sometimes, a little, a little bit too New York, you know what I'm saying? I rocks with it, but sometimes it's be a little bit too New York for me. Yeah, man, I mean, I, mess, I mess with Benny Butcher. I mean, I mean the, other, the other cats, uh, uh, I forgot their name, um, Conway and... I forgot the other guy name. They cool, they cool, but that that yeah, Benny Butcher, yeah, he the one. That that was nice. Number three, you know, I got to bring it to the bay. You know, my boy Larry Joe. You know, <laughs> hey, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that that uh, Bayon. Man, that keep going. And man, produced by Harry Fraud. I don't know. I mean, Harry Fraud. He got a like a lot of nice um a lot of nice beats. Man, he got a nice old school sound. You know, he used a lot of samples like old school like Temptation sound, but. Man, he put them them 808s behind it. Man, real clean, man. If y'all ain't heard it, man, keep going. Check that out. That one hard right there. My number two, this one was hard, though. This one is hard because I really wanted to put a number one. This number two, Freddie Gibbs. I'm afraid of okay, I, I, Gibbs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know you've been rocking with Gibbs for a minute. Gibbs, man. Yeah, good. Freddie Gibbs, man. That, that Alfredo, man, I, I believe he got, um, he got, he just got nominated for a Grammy, uh, Best Rap Album of the Year. Man, uh, I don't know who else is in that category with him, but that album, I hate to win. That I mean, he uh, he teamed up with Al the Alchemist. Alchemist, man. yeah, yeah. You know, Alchemist is another one. Been in the game, yeah, for a minute. Wow. Nice beats, man. Nice production, man. Uh, been around a lot of artists, man. They 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 mess with them, but this one right here. Freddie Gibbs and, and the Alchemist, man, that that that's another duo. That's man. Yes. nice. Man. And Freddie don't really get that. He don't he don't get the the the, the accolades that he he probably should be getting because he went through the whole situation with G's in and he got locked up. He had the charge and all that craziness. And he kind of you know what I'm saying he got past that, but he just doesn't get that recognition that he kind of like kind of like we're in the same boat with currency. You know what I'm saying? They kind of if he undergrounds, he's not underground because you don't really hear his music on on the, on the mainstream. But you know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. Yeah, man, he been around like you said. Man, he been around. He got a lot of. You know, you go back and listen to his old albums. He's like, man, this, he he been spinning for a while. He yeah. Bars, but uh, yeah, that that Alfredo is my, my number two. My number one, I gotta bring him. I gotta bring him back one more time. The Outrunners. The okay. Outrunners album that 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 spitter. The, okay. Man. Yeah, currency. That was it right there. That man, he was with Harry Fraud on that one too. Harry Fraud produced that album. Man, that was that was that was that was the soundtrack of the summer for me. The Outrunners, man. Uh, man, I. Man, one through however many, just let it ride. Just let it ride. Just turn all on, and that's that's kind of albums I like when you just hit the button and just let it ride, no skips and nothing like that. Yeah. And you can just tell when somebody really producing albums and they locking in with each other because you can hear that flow all the way through. And we, we kind of lose touch on the importance of a sequence in an album. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you have a lot of different beats and it just the the, the sound of the album is kind of all over the place and you're trying to put it in an order, it just don't come off right. But when you lock in with a guy and you produce from top to bottom and you put that sequence in there. And you got them tracks laid one behind the other. Sometimes you have a little skid in there, here and there. Oh, man, yeah. It just, just let it ride. Yeah, let it ride, man. He had, he had Ross come in, help him out on one. Hey, that that outrunners, man. To me, that was that was the number one album of the year. Uh, but like I said, man. I mean, I would be mad if Alfredo being number one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because hey, that that get, gangsta gears, man. He he put out a classic. To me, that was, he put out a classic with that one. But yeah, those are my top five right there. Man. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Like I said, man, this is our top five. I know you guys got your top five. We listen to different things. You, we always want people to help us put on new music. I hope some of the things that you heard in this in this clip here that you heard about some of this music that you may not have listened to that you go out and listen to and get some good replay value. You know, that's our top five albums of the year. We're going to wrap this one up. We'll be right back with our next segment. This is your boy Frank Nitton with my boy Wallace. Hey, we up here, man. Holla at us, man. We're going to be back with our next segment. Stay, stay locked in with us. This is your boy Frank Nitton.